you will learn how to perform DNS resolution for private AKS clusters at a scale. For that, we'll be exploring the centralized and decentralized solutions. Our goal here is that for our private AKS cluster that would be exposed through a private endpoint and the cluster virtual network, we want the following three actors to be able to access that control plane. First of all, we want the node pool or the worker nodes of the cluster to be able to resolve access to the control plane because that's required for the functioning of the AKS cluster. Second actor would be Jumpbox virtual machine that could be deployed either in the cluster virtual network or coming from the on-premise virtual networks if they are connected to the Azure virtual networks. And then the third player would be the CI-CD pipelines that will perform kube control or Helm operations in order to deploy applications into the AKS cluster. So we'll be exploring three solutions. Let's start with the easiest solution, which is a decentralized solution that will rely on the public FQDN of the AKS cluster. Let me explain. When we create a private IP address, a private endpoint will be created. And by default, a private DNS zone will be created in order to resolve access to that a private endpoint. But actually, there is an option where you can say, I don't want to create a private DNS zone when you set it to none. So in this case, who will resolve access to that uh, to the IP address of that private endpoint? Actually, that could be done through the public FQDN of the AKS control plane. The public FQDN is by default enabled. So your cluster have a public FQDN like this that ends with AZM for Azure Managed Kubernetes.io. And if you try to resolve that FQDN for your cluster, you will get here the private IP address of the private endpoint. So for some customers, this would be acceptable to keep this public FQDN resolving to the private uh, endpoint. At the end, from the internet, anyone can resolve the private IP of the cluster, but they cannot access actually. They might only access if they are inside the boundary of the network of the cluster, like inside the virtual network of the cluster or inside a, vir a period virtual network or from on-premise if they are connected to the cluster virtual network. For some customers, this is okay and they accept this trade-off as it's very simple to implement. However, for some enterprise customers that wants to use and to respect the zero trust network, they consider this to be a security issue. So they will be looking for the solution number two and number three. Let's explore the second solution, which is using the centralized DNS resolution. So for customers using hub and spoke models, some of them will require that all the DNS resolution will happen centrally within the hub virtual network. So they want all the private DNS zones to be attached to the hub virtual network. And we can do that with AKS. When we create the AKS cluster, we can specify the private DNS zone and then we can bring your own private DNS zone by specifying its zone ID. So we start first creating that private DNS zone, link it or attach it to the hub virtual network. And then when we create the cluster in its own virtual network, we can go to attach it to that a private DNS zone. And then when we create the second cluster, it will reuse the same existing private DNS zone for all the clusters. So the only action that will be performed there is to link the virtual network of the cluster to that private DNS zone. So the main point here is that we use one single private DNS zone for all the AKS clusters. And with this option, we can go to disable the public FQDN of the cluster. That way we would have only an FQDN with the private link that will resolve to the private IP address of the control plane. With this option, we use one single private DNS zone. So the DNS resolution is centralized, but the issue is that it is the AKS cluster who will go to create a NAE record into that private DNS zone. So each cluster creates its own A record. This means that the managed identity of the cluster should have access to read and modify the records within that private DNS zone. This behavior here might not be acceptable by some customers because in that case, they will consider the private DNS zone to be a single point of failure or presents a security threat because here, if one of these cluster identities are misused, it can lead to a misconfiguration within the private DNS zones.
because that access rights for modifying the private DNS zone is very high and it's very risky. Let's explore next the center or the decentralized solution, which is solution number three. With the centralized DNS resolution, each private AKS cluster would have its own private DNS zone. So if I have spoke number one, it will have its own private DNS zone and the same will be applicable for spoke number two. However, for the hub, it won't have its own DNS zone here, but to be able to resolve those private clusters from the hub, like a virtual machine inside the hub here or from on-premise virtual networks, we will need to create an additional link from the hub to the private DNS zone. And this could be done by automation tools like Terraform, Azure Bicep, or an Azure policy that will look for all the private DNS zones created for the AKS clusters and then automatically it can add an additional link to the virtual network of the hub. The advantage of this approach is that the private DNS zone of the cluster becomes the responsibility of the landing zone or the responsibility of the project or application team. And it's only the cluster of that uh, spoke who will be able and who, have, who will have the right access role to, add, to, to change the configuration and add a record within the private DNS zone. Keep in mind when working with Azure private DNS zones with the following three important limitations. A private DNS zone could be linked or attached to a maximum of 1000 virtual networks. A private DNS zone could be linked to at most 1000 virtual networks. And a virtual network like the hub could be attached or could be peered with at most 500 virtual networks as a spokes. Follow me next for a demonstration.